Joining us now is our seasonal guest here for the Cowboys Player Show, the Demarcus Lawrence Show, debuting right now on your home of the Cowboys, 105.3 The Fan. Man, thank you so much for agreeing to do this with us, Demarcus. We're really looking forward to it. Uh, how are you doing this afternoon? I'm doing great. Uh, just want to say what's up to all the Cowboys fans and all the Tolos out there. You know, appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, right on, yeah, man. Yeah, baby. Well, uh, I know a lot of them are looking forward to not only hearing from you but watching you play this year. We want to know from you, is it all right to call you Tank? Are we on, the, are we uh -huh. on those kind of terms? Yeah, most definitely, most definitely. Right on. I am, so, I am what I am. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> so I guess my first football question, let's get right into it. Is this the best defense you've ever played with? Yeah, man. Um, you know, the hopes are high this year. Um you know, just being able to see the type of speed that we have, um, the type of, you know, coaching staff built around us and uh, putting us all in the right places to make plays. So I'm um, very excited for the season. And, you know, I, I believe it is, but, you know, only time can tell. So we're going to just wait till after this first game and let y'all decide. How about that? <laughs> Sounds good. You know, Tank, we've kind of become defenders of yours at the radio station a little bit. A lot of the fans just look at the sack numbers, and that kind of becomes the box score, the end-all, be-all. It's like, where are the sacks? But when you look at the film, it's hard not to love the way you play the game. Do you get a little bit irritated by hearing that talk about the sack numbers? And when you look and you see the way that you play, you provide a lot more than just sacks. You're an all-around great defensive end. Yeah, yeah. Uh... You know, um, a lot of people in the world, you know, just look at, you know, your performance. Um, they don't look at, you know, the sacrifices you have to make each and every day to be able to, you know, even play this game. So, you know, I'm truly honored that I, I get another shot to even play this game. But, you know, to the uh, fan standpoint, um, I mean, it's, the, it's their opinion. You know, I let them believe what they want to believe, but I'm just here. I'm um, just trying to make plays for my team and help us win. So, you know, it, it is in what terms it is. No, 100%. But in, in terms of that, it, do you think that it will be a benefit being able to have guys like Micah and Dante Fowler and Endurance coming off of the year that he was able to have, being able to not have all the pressure on you, not having to take on so many double teams? Can this be one of those years where you get back to maybe a double-digit type of sack season? Yeah, I truly believe that. Um, I truly believe that, you know, I'm in the best shape of my life. Um you know, and being able to have, you know, those different uh, caliber of guys on the field, it does open more opportunities for me. So I'm excited about the opportunities I'm going to get and, um, you know, just ready for them. Tank, uh, when we were out at camp and you mentioned about the best shape of your life, you look like you've, you've trimmed down. I mean, not losing definition or anything like that, but was there a plan coming in to say, okay, I'm getting a little older, need to get a little lighter, or am I, am I reading too much into that? Uh, I mean, I, don't, I can't tell you what you was reading because I don't know what was put out there. But, uh, you know, uh, I feel like I am in the best shape of my life. I've um, been eating healthier. And, yes, it is because of age and, you know, uh, my history of injuries. So I just wanted to make sure I was fully prepared and, you know, capable to go out there and help my team this year. Now, I've always wondered, I, I've been coming out to Oxnard for 12 years, I guess now. When it comes to conditioning in the NFL, I was wondering if you could peel the curtain back for us a little bit so we could understand what all goes into it. Because at camp, it doesn't look like what fans might think of as training camp as far as like the hard cardiovascular and intense constant sweating. How do you know when you're ready to start a season? And what does the conditioning look like that, that uh, reporters never get to see? Uh... I mean, it's a lot of conditioning in there. It's mental conditioning and physical conditioning. And, uh, you know, it's, it's heightened on all levels. So being able to, you know, uh, get your play call and focus on your job, make sure you're aligned right, make sure you had a proper technique to, you know, uh, do your job. Now you got to run to the ball, you know, and you got to finish on it. So, um, I mean, it's mental and uh, physical conditioning. You know, and I think they just look at, you know, the running part instead of all the mental part that goes into playing in the NFL. DeMarcus Lawrence with us here in the G-Bag Nation. Now, DeMarcus, as you get a little bit older in the league, the body, it does take a toll on you. Where, where are you at now in terms of when it comes to the recovery? How much more time do you have to invest uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the recovery after a game? And at what point in the week do you start feeling like, okay, now I'm, now I'm back to feeling good? Does it take till Wednesday or Thursday before you're like, okay, now I'm good after what just went down, all those, uh, all those car accidents I was in on Sunday? <laughs> 
Yeah, uh, you know, that's why I really think this is you know, going to be one of my best years right here. Uh, it's because, um, you know, I, I usually wait, you know, and, and start to feel the body starting to break down to start to, you know, try to get uh, recovery tools in place. But, uh, you know, this year I already, you know, put them in place. So, you know, after every practice, after, you know, every workout or whatever, I'm already, you know, in the recovery and rehab process. So, um, you know, I'm pretty excited about it. Tank, is it is it more difficult as a pass rusher to play a guy that gets rid of the ball quickly or a guy that moves around in the pocket all over the place? You say say it again as a pass rusher? Well, yeah, as a pass rusher, when you're when you're pre preparing like okay, you got Tom Brady who tends to get the ball out quick. Is that uh -huh. more difficult to play against a, say against a, a Kyler Murray who might be moving all over the place in the pocket? Yeah, uh I feel like, you know, both have, um, you know, their tendencies on, you know, what they're good at. Um, you know, Calamari, uh shorter guy than Tom Brady. And, you know, uh, Tom Brady's pocket presence is, you know, off the charts. So uh, it's just all about, you know, it's just staying locked in throughout the game and, uh, you know, making your plays when it's time to make your plays. Do you have to set it a different, like when you're thinking about your rush levels and stuff like that, is it like, okay, I can't take it this far up the field or I have to think more about being inside? Is it is it different when you have those two types of quarterbacks? Oh, yeah, most definitely different. Um, you know, uh, your rush levels on Kyler Murray is going to be a little higher than on, on Tom Brady. So uh, it's just really about, uh, you know, what y'all put in, what's y'all game plan throughout the week on how y'all going to rush them up front as a unit um, because, you know, it's easy to say, uh, you know, one man gets sacks, you know, but it, it takes a whole line to, you know, orchestrate a, a one sack. So um, it's just all about the game plan. You sure did t uh, sack Tom Brady there in, in 2019. DeMarcus, does it feel different when you get the GOAT? Uh, all honesty, no. It feels the same as any other quarterback um, in the league. Um, and – the reason I say that is because, you know, um, of who Tom, Brady's, Tom Brady is and his uh, statue, um, referees ain't going to just let you, you know, tee off on <laughs> the GOAT. You know what I mean? So yeah. you have to be cautious about your strike zone and, you know, be fully prepared for a flag if you don't hit them the right way. <laughs> so is, is it on your mind at all that the Cowboys have never beaten Tom Brady and this might be the last chance to do that? No, um, you know, we we blessed with another opportunity to go out there and play him. Um, you know, our hopes are high. And, um, you know, we've been pre uh, preparing, you know, like hell, you know, throughout this whole training camp. So I feel like, you know, our preparation will uh, do the talking for us and we'll be ready when the lights turn on. Well, you did have one of the quotes of the week with uh, being the underdogs. You said, let the dogs eat. It's kind of like Micah with his animal quotes. Is Micah Parsons maybe rubbing off on you a little bit with the, with some of the lion talk and all the animalistic mentality? Oh, man. Yeah, Micah is a character of his own. Uh, you know, love him as a player, love him as a guy. Uh, but, no, he's definitely not rubbing off on me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys have, like, some type of uh, friendly wager on, on who's going to, like, get more sacks and more quarterback hits and stuff like that for the season? Oh, most definitely. We're going to settle that tonight. Yes. Okay, wait, we got a little team team bonding tonight? Are we doing Pizza Hut over at Micah's and maybe Micah's <laughs> mom's cooking up a meal for us? Maybe the mac and cheese? Football? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got team bonding tonight. Um, you know, we're going to set our goals for the season. Um, you know, looking forward to seeing what Michael puts on the table, uh, you know, for his sack record. So, you know, up for the challenge and, you know, glad I'm able to do it. Hey, Tank, I, I was going to ask you about, you know, because, you know, with Tyler Smith making a start at left tackle, mm -hmm. has, you know, you're such a teacher and such a good teammate. Has he asked you about are you have you offered to him about what he might see in his first NFL game, or is that something you just let him be? That you know, hey, this I'm just going to let you do what you need to do, or or do you go up and tell him what he might see uh, going forward here in the NFL with making his first start? Yeah, uh, you know, I, I definitely offer my advice to all my teammates. Um, you know, and I had a chance to you know go over there and work with Tyler uh, last week, and uh, I mean. Me personally, I think Tyler, you know, looks good at uh, right tackle, and um, 
uh, being able to, you know, see how he uh, evolved over uh, the training camp process, going from uh, right guard to right tackle. No, I'm sorry, he's playing left tackle. Um, yeah, going from right you know, left tackle to uh, left guard. I mean, he's looking great, you know, and um, I feel like, you know, he's going to be pretty solid. So, you know, just, you know, bear with him, give him time to adjust to, you know, the game speed of the NFL, but he's going to be pretty good. Did you guys tear his ass up at the uh, the rookie dinner? <laughs> Say it again. Was there a rookie dinner situation where Tyler Smith got uh got kind of dominated uh with the bill? Nah, nah, they ain't they ain't go down. Um, uh, I don't know where you getting that information from, but I ain't hear about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, speaking of dinners, so I mean, we talked about how you're a lean shredded machine now. Was there mm-hmm. something that you had to cut out of your diet? That was very difficult for you. Like, what is your kryptonite when it comes to food? Uh, I say ice cream. You know, after a long day of work, you know, I can, you know, sit on the couch and eat a little bowl of ice cream. And that can mess my whole, you know, week up. So, you know, I cut the ice cream on my uh, diet. Um, you know, I did a couple of fasts over the off seasons, um, you know, cutting out food, going on more of a liquid diet. You know, and it helped out, so, uh, you know. We got to know the favorite flavor of the ice cream, though. No, man, it's, it's some little gelato or whatever, so, oh, I mean. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Demarcus Lawrence here on 105 through the fan. Okay, so getting together for team bonding tonight, I imagine you guys are going to watch Bills and Rams? Yeah, maybe planning on it. If we have a TV at our location. So when when you're watching, are you watching for just fun? Are you watching to scout the other contenders, or or what do you like to pay attention to when you're just watching an NFL game? Uh, I I say both. Um, you know, you're always trying to learn. Um, you know how the game speed is going to look this year. Uh, you know the the unique formations and you know styles of play of you know different teams and you know um. You know, really the hits, um, you know, I mean, football season is football season. Everybody, you know, ready for some hits to go down and, you know, uh, the contact. So just looking forward for, you know, the season to kick off. Uh, You know, some of the players that I used to play with, you know, uh, you know, play on those teams. So looking to see them shine tonight and what they do. Tank, I have to ask this. What was your first thought when you heard uh, your defensive line coach with a British accent? (laughs) <laughs> oh man yeah AD was it, was it strange oh. yeah ad was it was it strange to hear a british accent telling you about pass rush techniques i mean it was but it wasn't because uh you know a little history cap uh so my rookie year ad was a a, a student coach here uh with the cowboys on the uh, rob marinelli system so you know basically me and him was in the same boat uh as rookies, you know, into the league. So um, I got to know AD real well, hell of a guy, um, hell of a coach. And, you know, and, uh, you know, just on this accent, I feel like, it, you know, it'll summer down over time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tank, what was your reaction when you saw Dak leaving the practice field today there? I guess the new shoes caused a little discomfort, no big deal. But what were you thinking as you saw it playing out? Yeah, uh, I didn't actually notice it until later in practice. Um, you know, I ain't seen him in for no plays. And, you know, I asked Zeke, you know, where he was. And, um, you know, he told me he uh, had a little problem with his shoes. So he'll be all right, you know. So um glad he's all right. Um, can't wait to see him play on Sunday. Um, and, yeah. Well, we can't wait to see you play on Sunday, Tank. We're excited to chat with you all season long. It's going to be fun to get to know you a little bit, but I'm curious, when it comes to the game day regimen, what, what is, uh, what, what's a typical pregame meal look like for, for Demarcus Lawrence? But now I'm on this, you know, healthy run. Um, so diet done changed a little bit. Um, you know, I got uh, pre-made meals uh, prepared for me throughout the week. So, you know, I just uh, probably on Sunday stick to one meal uh on the healthier side you know and then uh you know eat up eat on sunday night on the field and you know probably eat afterwards because i'll be hungry again so <laughs> you like to play hungry uh i mean you know it, it brings an, another aggression out you um you know if you ever seen anybody hungry 
you know, and waiting on a meal, uh, you know, the aggression can really raise. So, uh, you know, definitely want to bring some extra aggression into the game um, and, you know, help help us bring out this W. Got Tom Brady on the menu for Sunday night. That sounds delicious. Yeah, damn right. <laughs> so you're playing you're playing Sunday night. Do you have a time in which you prefer to play? Do you like the primetime games, or would you rather just kick it off at noon central and let's just go to work? Uh, me personally, I like the, you know, nighttime games. I um, feel like my body, you know, is, is more looser at night, you know, just because I went through a full full day of, of work and, you know, being with the family and stuff. So, you know, I'm more looser, um, you know, more limbo and, you know, ready to go at nighttime. DeMarcus, what's on the, uh, the, the pregame playlist? Ooh. <clears throat> I mean, I got some worship music on there. You know, um, Love it. Ooh, I don't know, man. It, it really fluctuates. Uh, you know, I can go, you know, hip out one day. I can be on rock the next day. It's just really about, you know, where my energy is at on that day. Okay, very good. Now, I need I need a little myth busting here from Demarcus Lawrence. We have a, your new teammate, Kevante Turpin. Hopefully, he finds himself in the end zone a bunch of times this year and we can all embrace him as a Dallas Cowboy community. But he's alleging that he can like uh, he, he can power clean over 400 pounds and he can squat over 600 pounds. Have you seen have you seen this firsthand? Can you confirm or deny for us that little Turpin is potentially the pound for pound strongest dude on the team? Seriously? I'm, I'm, I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious. We talked about it yesterday. <laughs> well, he, I, he just busted the myth. Uh, <laughs> I guess that answers the question for us. So oh, thank you, man. Wow, Turpin. That's amazing. <laughs> Appreciate you, Tank. Thanks so much for the deal in the weekly. We so much look forward to it. Give him hell on Sunday. We'll be pulling for you. Uh, absolutely. Appreciate it, guys.